Hello, I'm Carmen Medlin. In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint a digital stamp with watercolors. I'm using my Sunflower Digi Stamp from SCACD, and there's a link to where you can get that in the description. First, I had to transfer the digital stamp to my watercolor paper. You can do this in different ways, and I'll list some others in the description. Today, though, I traced it onto the watercolor paper by using a printout of the image underneath and a light box. You can also tape it to a window during the daytime if you don't have a light box. Try to trace lightly since you don't want really uh, dark lines. You want it to be real light with watercolor. I ended up forgetting to trace the little butterfly in this stamp, so sadly he will not be in the video. The first thing I do is put down a light base wash of watercolor for the main shapes. I almost always use a lot of water mixed with the paint and build colors up in layers after they dry. I'm painting the sunflower yellow in this video, but you can paint it any color you want. You can even do it purple with polka dots if you feel like it. There's no rules, just have fun. Um, if you have any areas that are going to stay white, I would reserve those um, from the beginning because it's really hard to add white in. I mean, you really can't with watercolor without acrylics or something. So I'm just using um, a light green wash that is muted down with red. I do that a lot with my greens because I find um, even when you mix them with yellow and another green or yellow and blue, it's a little bright for my tastes. And right here I am using a, um, it's kind of a light yellowish brown, like a raw sienna, and I'm just putting in some fold lines where the petals would um, show some contours. This makes it look more realistic. And what I'm doing with the, um, the water there is if I have any real harsh lines that I want to soften up, I'll just um, clean my brush off with some clear water and then blend it out. I do that a lot because I don't like a lot of lines in my watercolors. The paints that I like to use are um, usually M. Graham, Windsor & Newton, and Holbein. They're all um, professional grade, but you can, you can use Grumbacher, that's a pretty good brand for more of a student grade that'll still get a good look. So the next step after those leaves have dried, you want to make sure that your watercolor dries in between layers or else you're going to get some weird spotting and water blooms that you don't want. Um, I'm putting in a, uh, this is kind of a burnt sienna color that I have. It's kind of a, um, a reddish brown but you're putting it in really light and blending it out with plenty of water. I just like to get um, the little corners and stuff and where things meet up so that um, it provides more dimension and more contrast. It's nice to build up in layers like this because then you're not committing a real dark color all at once and possibly make a mistake and this way you can kind of gradually build up your colors. It takes a little time but I think it makes nice results. Mm -hmm. 
And there's lots of ways you can use digital stamps besides just um, making a painting. I mean, you can put these in art journals, um, personal collages, kind of like a personal expression like you would use in a journal, but make a, a collage, a painting out of it. thing I'm going to do here is uh, actually a purple. I have a dioxazine purple in my palette, but you could really use any purple. The reason I use that is because it's a complementary color to yellow. <clears throat> and um, it's gonna make a nice shadow color, but you have to be really light with it. Use a light touch because Purple can overpower yellow really easily. I use a lot of water to blend out. I just stick this, like you see here, in just the tiniest little corners. I kind of, I call them darts. I don't know why, it just kind of the word I use. Because they're just tiny little, almost V shapes in these little corners. At this point, I am putting a brighter yellow wash on some of the petals because uh, watercolor dries lighter than it looks when you first put it down. So even though it looked pretty yellow in the beginning, it's it's uh, quite a bit lighter now. And um, I'm kind of staggering this because I like the flower to have a dimensional look and it'll if you darken some of the petals, it's going to make them recede into the back and the lighter ones will look like they're more forward. And as you can see, I'm reserving some of the lighter areas in individual petals so that they'll look more like they're coming forward. And I'm going back with um, kind of a orangey yellow here. I'm using gamboge mixed with the yellow. So it gives it a warmer look just for some of the petals here. Now for the middle of the flower, um, I am a huge fan of sap green. I use it all the time. So this is just a bit of a darker mix of sap green with some yellow in it and a teeny bit of red to tone it down. You can tone down um, any color with its complement and green's complement is red. So I do that a lot with greens. I'm just following the little um, seed lines in there and kind of blending them out so they're not harsh. Because again, I'm not a big, huge fan of harsh lines except for an outline look. Getting the edges so that um, this middle part of the flower is um, further back than the seeds that are around it, which I'm painting now. Um, I'm staggering the little brown seeds because um, they're not dry yet and I don't want them to bleed into each other. And I'm trying to reserve a little bit of highlight in there. 
If you forget to reserve highlights, you can always add it in with a white gel pen for tiny stuff like that. bit of time. It almost looks like corn. Okay, and then I'm using um, some sienna brown to blend the brown seed area into the green area so that it uh, looks like they're more connected. That helps a lot. Um, when you want things to look like they belong together, you can sort of put each other's colors in there, blend colors over, gives it more of a unified look. Just building up the greens in the middle there. Now I am taking my really tiny brush. Um, this is a zero slash three round brush and um, taking a real dark brown and making um, uh, I can't think of the word, but I'm making the seeds look individual. <laughs> putting some lines in between them. I almost always use round brushes. You don't have to go expensive on these at all. I don't. They just have to be able to keep a good point on them. I use the points a lot for details. Okay, so for this sunflower, I have decided to outline the petals and the stem and everything just to give it more presence because it is really light. So I'm using that same tiny round brush with the um, raw sienna, but this is a thicker mix, so I'm using less water in it so that it looks darker than the other places I've used that color. But still light, uh, still watery enough that it's easy to move across the paper. I don't always outline things this way, especially with flowers, but um, I think it, it makes a nice look. It's one look of many that you can use. Okay, moving on to the stem. So this is a yet darker mix of the sap green that I love so much, which basically means less water used. I'm um, giving it some dimension here, following the, the veins in the leaves, blending out with water.
This is the fun part for me, putting in details like this. After that layer is dry, um, I'm going back with some hooker's green, which is darker than sap green. Mixing that with a little red too, that'll make it even darker still. And just like I did with the petals, this is almost um, those little darts I was talking about. Just little V shapes where corners meet. Blend it out with water, of course. Back to the itty bitty brush. And I'm outlining with um, a medium dark green. Not too dark. This is almost done here. I'm going to add in some veins in the middle there and I'm not going to blend them out with water because I want these to stand out. And that's that! <laughs> 